Uh, hello everyone, welcome to my model railway blog. I've been doing a few videos on basically the JMRI and the Arduinos at the moment. I'm trying to build a model railway using the Arduinos. I'm trying to keep my costs down by not buying loads of DCC occupied sensors and etc. Um, I've been doing basically the last few videos on the current sensors. I've been trying to run it this try and detect trains on the track using CT sensors. This is a nano system, so we have a train on the track like you can see in the video at the moment doing nothing but just sitting there and the current draw is very very low so it's hard to detect. So I did some on the CTs with no electronics at all and, and it worked fine for one CT but as soon as I started putting on more than one CT it started to cause problems trying to read I was getting voltages and signals all over the place it wouldn't work. So I've had to change it. So I did find this website here, which is brilliant. Um, the link website names up top there. I'll put a link in the bottom, um, as you can go to, and it gives you a good drawing of how to connect up the CT using a voltage divider. So I'm taking the five volts from the Arduino to zero ground, and with a voltage divider of two resistors, I end up with two and a half volts in the middle, and this allows us to swing up and down um, from zero to five when we're reading the CT, um, and we have to put a burning resistor and a capacitor in as well. Um, this website explains the calculations for the burden resistor down the bottom down here. Um, and I've done my calculations on a, a 1 amp pool. Um, so I've worked it out to be about 3.3 or 3 .3 to 4.7k. Um, or 4.7k resistors what I had in the box I used then. For my R1 and R2 I've used 47k resistors. Because um, that's what I had in the box as well. Um, and you all have to download. Which I think is down the bottom here, if you go to this Arduino sketch current only and click on that, again it gives you another write up of how to do everything um, and how to calculate some parts of it um, it also gives you a basic program but the reason why you're coming to this site is to download this EMON lib and you'll have to put that into your Arduino library which will allow you to run this sketch um, it's a very very good um, program so I'll show you my wiring diagram at the moment, which I've done. Let's bring the camera up. Get this lead out of the way. Um, so my, as I said earlier, it's five volts to zero, and there's my voltage divider, 47k, and each resistor to 2.5 in the middle, with the capacitor to earth at the end here. And then each CT then is is fed to 2.5 volts, and in each CT on the um, pin pin outputs um, has a burden resistor across the pins and then each one gives an goes into an analog input into Arduino so it's analog input A0 for my first occupied sensor A1, A2 for the next two occupied sensors now originally I put all this into the mega and I run the reading from the sketches or just a minute ago as I'll show you um, so the reading from them sketches we're then putting the bits into the CMRI and updating CMRI. I found this wasn't fast enough, it was so slow, it was the lights, and the, even the transmission lights and the LEDs were just flashing every couple of seconds, so JMRI wasn't picking up the trains being active on the tracks, um, so it wasn't fast enough. So in the end I put these into a nano, um, so the nano that runs all the current sensing inside of it, four occupied sensors, and then the nano turns on four LEDs, I've only got three in this picture because I'm only running three at the moment, um, so each LED will correspond to each CT occupied system and so when a train's on this part of the track it turns turn this LED on to show that that's occupied and then again that one turns this LED on and so forth and this will become my mimic panel so this is really good and this also will feed into the signal system so this nano will run the four signals for this part of this area of the track so JMRI has nothing to do with this this is purely Arduino's running the signals occupied and mimic panel which is very very fast um, and it works really good. Um, I've then just tapped off the outputs from the Nano into my Mega which runs the CMII update, the bits that I showed you in previous videos which then update that into the PC for the JMI. so you can run the Mimic panel on here and if I can get it run fast enough you could run automatic systems but I'm not confident on that part at the moment. Um, so that's the basic drawing. Wiring is a, a mess at the moment, it's just a prototype um, you can see down here it's flashing away at the moment the 
nanos working at the moment reading the sensors there's my two resistors to make my um, voltage divider with my capacitor um, each that red cable white cable over there and all that uh, are my outputs to the CTs um, the LEDs are down here you can see the red ones on at the moment that's showing you that the tr track is occupied the train is sitting on that part of the track if I just go and take that part off you can see it goes off and if I put it on the other occupied part of the track you can see the blue lights just come on because it's in the second part of the occupied circuit and I'll bring it back again to the first part so you can see that works quite well um, for a mimic panel it's going to be brilliant um, for the program side of it I'll just bring up the first part of the Arduino this will be the nano um, you've got to include your library that I said you have to download and then you have to set up an instant for e each occupied part you're going to be monitor so my first occupied track I've given it a name of read occupied one you can call that whatever you like you just got to remember that for later on in the program uh, and I've connected that up to um, an LED connected to pin 12 which will come on which you said the, was the red one just a minute ago so that'll come on every time that part of the track's occupied and then the same for number two same for number three and I've got four written in there because I wanted to test the speed of this program but I've actually got a CT connected to four um, set up serial connection basic serial connection um, you have to set up the um, read occupied one dot current zero to say that I'm connecting that CT for the first occupied track to analog zero um, and then a calibration number which is from the program I haven't played with that don't really know much about how that works at the moment um, and then for the second part it's connected to analog pin one A1 and the other one is connected to analog pin A2 and then I've got analog pin A3 but like I said that's not connected at the moment so these are just the analog inputs that you have to put in and then you give them the name that you set up at the beginning of the program hope that makes sense and then pin mode for each LED output which is basic Arduino stuff um, for the loop I'm doing a reading on to read into occupied one um, the reading from the track one so track one was re read occupied one um, and then we're going to read it I'll put a number in here of 300 that should be about 300 times it reads it and then gives you a the I think it's the RMS current reading output um, on this program you download the example um, you download which was yeah, let's bring that again that brings on here. Um, it's got a 1480 in here um, that's far too slow for what we're trying to do, I'm trying to do um, at that speed when I'm doing four readings like this um, the program so slow the time track train goes through a track and out the LEDs are just about coming on and, I'll, and CMR never picks it up um, so I've dropped it to 300 I might even drop it slower you'll see the speed in a minute and I'm going to keep playing with these to get these speeds going really fast as I can I haven't looked at the actual um, library to see whether it's a way I can speed things up in the library um, it's written I think in C programming which I ain't very good at and be handy if I can add to speed that up as well um, I'm serial printing out the outputs just from my calibration point when I'm happy with it I'll probably comment these out which will probably speed things up a little bit more so when it gets the reading it's occupied one it's basic thing there of if occupied one is greater than 89 which is when the trains on there um, just idling I'm getting just over the, in the 89s 90s um, we're going to turn LED on for the occupied one which will be that red LED so earlier if it goes down to less than 40 we'll turn that LED off um, there is a a difference between these two it's a gap in between like a threshold you put it on and off because if you have these directly the same like 89 there and 88 here um, 88 here the this changeover is so um, slow as uh, changeover is so close together that you get jumping around of the LEDs on and off when even the train ain't there so this is part of the calibration that you need to set up yourself if you decide to do this um, you can see this on the serial monitor, which I, I, I'll bring up and show you now. Actually, um, see so if I just bring up the camera. I'm running this on the other my my laptop because I've got so much connected with doing these videos to the main PC that it's, it slows everything down. So normally you can run this program here with the serial monitor because um, it's separate to JMI. Um, the Mega can run in the CMI, and you can run JMI um, in your SPOG all on one computer. And so you can do all your calibrations and everything all in one computer, which is quite handy. 
um, but for now I'll actually put this onto the laptop. So over my laptop here, I'll just try and zoom in. You can see it's reading the way um, it's occupied one there, occupied two, and over there is occupied three. Um, you can see, we're just looking at occupied one and two, the train's sitting on occupied one at the moment. You can see I'm reading in the over the 80s, which is what I, I said over here, it's over 80s, so it's turning the LED on. And over here on the occupied off and two, it's reading into the 20s to 30s. Now if I move my train along now, to the other part, you can see this is now occupied two has gone up to the, into the 80s, um, and occupied one's gone down to the 20s. Now the reason why I picked 40, uh, I can't really show this on the video, but you can try this yourself. Um, when you run a train through these occupied networks, although these drop down quickly now by me pushing the train across, but when you're actually putting voltage through and you run the train through, the speed that this drops down to the 20s to 30s is very, very slow. It normally hovers around the 40s, um, just below, uh, below 40s. Um, so that's something you need to take into consideration. You do need to calibrate each of your occupied inputs, because I also found the CTs, um, depend on the... I'll, I'll, it might be something to do with the CTs not being very well calibrated. Um, it might be something to do with the wiring, because I've got longer runs on some, but they all read differently. Um, and this goes back to also the reading that I set up here is 300. Um, you can see the speed that this is coming in at, which is quite good. It's fast enough from what I'm doing, I think. If I bring this up to 1400 odd, um, these will be coming through at about every half a second or, or more. Um, if I go down too low to 100 on this, the readings become too erratic to the point you can't use the, this this if function if, if statement. I mean, um, so this is the nano part, and it, this part works pretty good, I think. Um, so looking at the mega side of it, um, which is this bit here, this is basic CMI, which I've shown you previously on on other sketches I've done. Um, I've got my basic variable set up to read the pins because I'm just reading the pins from this Arduino into this Arduino and I'm going to be storing them into these parts. Um, the serial setup, as you can see, I've increased my serial connection up here, and I'll show you why in the JMRI later. Um, just, uh, just bear that in mind. And I've got my pin mode set up that I'm reading inputs for each three input LEDs I've got over here turned on and off. The CMI process is started. I'll read all the digital inputs of each of the occupiers from the nano, and then basically if function again, so each group, this is for occupied one, this is for occupied two, and the bottom one is occupied three, so all the same. So if occupied one reading is equal to one, that means the LED is on, then we're going to send bit zero uh, one to this JMRI. Um, if it's equal to zero, then I'm going to read bit um, zero, I'm going to give it a zero to JMRI. And that's it for the Arduino programming. Um, not sure if I can speed this up, whether I can put these into individual packages at the end. I haven't been able to work that one out, which will probably make it faster. Um, but at the moment it, this works. Although as you see in a minute there is a problem with speed on JMI. Uh, right, so I did get rid of them and I'll bring up my JMI. Right, in a previous video, just to bypass a bit, I had problems with setting up the Arduino. Let's bring the camera over. Um, you can see the Mega's flashing away over here because um, we had, I've had at the moment got com communication between the Arduino and JMRI using CMRI. Um, so that's why that flashes away. So this has got the communication. In previous video that you might have seen, I had a problem with this, it wasn't doing it. Every time I went to here and opened the panel, um, I wouldn't get this flashing communication. The, uh, the TX would flash, but the RX wouldn't flash. I found out that if we waited 10 seconds, so you start a panel pro, wait 10 seconds before you open up your panels, this works perfectly fine. Um, so the time I open panel pro up, go to tools, set up a throttle, which is up here, and put in my train number, set that for the throttle, then go and open panels, it's, that's long enough for this to work, and it works every time. Um, Reading some, what some people said in the JMI um, Yahoo group, this is something to do to the panel pro and to set, set up, do a start up and certain things before it can communicate. And if you do try and communicate beforehand, it can lock it up or cause an error. Um, I had the same problems with Pi, so 10 seconds away, it's not a problem. Anyway, that's um, sidetracking a bit. Skip it to the camera. Um, so, 
with the basic throttle set up up here I've got an activation on um, number two it's been coming up again um, you can see over here I've got a blue light which is for my Occupy 2 and the train is sitting in my number two section now, if I move the train down itself um, to the next section if you watch up here on the activations um, you should see a change as I push it along there you go I'm there in section one which has gone active and it's gone inactive there in section two so pushing it along works great um, I now go for a run down the track I'll put it to forward um, keep an eye on these it's active now and actually one and as you see it past the camera you should see two come active and that should go inactive it goes and it goes into three you see I've gone into three and then two's got inactive and I'll bring it back again there's two active and there's one active and that's gone inactive now I don't know if you noticed the speed that it becomes inactive is very slow it can take nearly the whole section before it becomes inactive and that's going to be a problem I think because when I've got carriages on I could be going for a whole section without ever becoming inactive and that's why I don't think I'm going to get the automatic system working on this but it works at the moment which is quite good I don't know whether there's any settings in JMOI I can change um, on the preferences which I said about earlier about speed I changed the connection settings for the CMOI for the Arduino to the 57600 band which is what I said about earlier on this part here so I did that to try and speed it up but it's not made a difference. So I've still got a problem with that. I'm, I don't know whether I'm happy with that, um, whether it's going to cause a problem. That's something to play around with. Um, for the mimic side of it, as you can see, I'm on the red LED at the moment down here because we're active up here. And if I move the train down now, you'll see that change over. See, it's blue, two, green for red. Um, green, sorry, green for uh, number three. And if I bring it back, Blue for occupied two, red for occupied one, and it changes over. Now, so you can see this this change over really really quickly, and I can probably speed this up a bit if I need to, but at the moment it seems fine. Now, that's it at the moment. So I've got a potential mimic panel for three sections on the track at the moment. I've got JMRI reading the three sections, which works quite well. Even to the point where I take the train off, it goes inactive, and the light at the bottom has gone out, and bring it back on again. When I get if I get one of the things I'm looking at doing to make things a bit better on the reading on the nano is it um, with, the, with the, at the moment I've only connected up a DC chip on this you can see it's a bit of wire and the chip is underneath the train because I can't get it inside at the moment these are being nano trains there's not much room I've still got to work on that and when I do do that I might be able to put a little tiny LED light in in the cab um, or some, do something or resistor or something which will increase the current by even just by a little bit um, which will make a difference when it's sitting in a siding when it's on the main track it'll probably have carriages on the back which will all have resistors on the wheels um, so this will pick up a lot better because you can't read it will be a lot better um, so it's early days I've still got a lot to do I'm going to start concentrating on making this a mess over here a bit neater and I've still got to build a power supply at the moment it's all running on a bench power supply um, I've got a spare bench power so I'm going to dismantle and use for the model trains. Um, I think that's about it for this one. I hope you, en you enjoy the videos um, and they're helpful. If anyone's got any questions, put them in the comments below. Um, if anyone's got any suggestions on how to speed this up or anything else I'm doing wrong or right, um, again, put it in the comments below and I'll keep uh, trying to comment back. I'll keep an eye on it. But for now, thanks for watching and that's it. Goodbye.